If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Join us as we hold on until the end. This is going to blow your mind. All the stuff that we've been learning over the years in our churches have been wrong. It's time for us to listen to Jesus, don't you think? It's time for us to learn from the master. The master. <laughs> I want to learn from Jesus. I really do. twist scriptures to convince us that we are forever trapped like this scripture right here classic twisting of scripture right here buddy first John 1 8 is completely and totally twisted by the devil what does first John 1 8 say it says if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us Satan takes that one verse out of the seven verses around it and tries to convince you that you can't stop sinning because the unlearned and the ignorant and the naive have not read that in context. Please repent before it's too late. Satan wants you to believe his doctrine. Can I get an amen? Satan wants you to believe his doctrine, his teachings on sin. What is the teaching of, of sin according to Satan? Let me see if I, if I can get some really good guesses out there. What is the teaching of sin according to Satan? Do what you want, ye shall be as gods. It's okay, do what you want. You guys are getting it, you guys are getting it. It's normal and natural. That's a good one, that, that there, Zach, very good. Hey, that's very good, Aaron. Very good, Aaron and Zach got really good. Listen, the, sin, the teaching of sin that Satan says is that you will always be a sinner and that you cannot stop sinning. Do you guys understand that? That you can't stop. Can I get an amen? I want to make sure we're on the same page. Satan wants to tell you that you'll always be a sinner and you cannot stop sinning. That's the doctrine of devils. Does that sound familiar to some of you in some of your churches? Does that sound familiar? Have you heard pastors say that before? Have you heard Bible study uh, teachers say that before? It's that, that, that's called a doctrine of devils. That's the teaching of, of Satan. Now, what is the teaching of Christ about this? The doctrine of Christ teaches us the exact opposite. The doctrine of Christ teaches us how, how to stop sinning, how to overcome, that we should believe that we can overcome. And I pray that everyone that comes to this room understands that fundamental difference, that you can stop sinning through Christ only. Now notice, now notice I said through Christ through Christ, through Jesus. You cannot stop sinning on your own. It's impossible, don't even try it. You see, Satan twists some things around. Satan twists some things around. Let me show you some examples. Look at this. Satan twists scriptures to convince us that we are forever trapped, like this scripture right here. Classic twisting of scripture right here, buddy. First John 1 John 1.8 is completely and totally twisted by the devil. What does 1 John 1, 8 say? It says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Satan takes that one verse out of the seven verses around it and tries to convince you that you can't stop sinning because the unlearned and the ignorant and the naive have not read that in context. They have no idea what that verse is really saying because when you take it out of context, it does sound like you can't stop sinning. It does. It, it really does. When you take it out of context just like that and read it all by itself, that verse sounds like you cannot stop sinning. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But we know because we've studied that passage, the whole passage, we've studied the whole passage and we know what it's really talking about, don't we? Give me a seven if you have studied our videos on that passage. You've studied our teachings on that passage. You know what that's really talking about. Well, good. I'm glad there's, there's quite a few of you that know what that's talking about.
This is going to blow your mind. All the stuff that we've been learning over the years in our churches have been wrong. It's time for us to listen to Jesus, don't you think? It's time for us to learn from the master. The master. <laughs> I want to learn from Jesus. I really do. We know that that verse does not mean you can't stop sinning because we've studied it in context. We know that that's talking about someone who says they have never sinned in their life. We know that that's talking about somebody's overall life. That if they say there is no sin and that they have no sin and that they've never sinned, they're a liar. We know in context that that's what it's really talking about. Not day to day growing up in Christ and overcoming sin, but in your entire history saying that you have never sinned. That's a liar. All right, here we go. Listen, the Bible is filled with scriptures that must be in context or you will not understand the spiritual teaching. So many. And that's exactly what the devil does in his doctrine. He takes things out of context. Granted, there are things, spiritual, deep teachings that transcend the context, that it doesn't matter what's going on in the context. Those teachings would apply to every man, woman, and child around the universe, around the world, and it doesn't matter in the detailed context because it's such a spiritually impacting teaching. For instance, when God says, you can do all things if you believe, he's talking to a specific person in that context. However, that applies to all of us. In every situation of our lives, God is teaching a universal teaching. You can take that out of context. Paul takes it out of context. He uses it. Philippians 4.13, he says, I can do all things through Christ. That's the same form of teaching. You can do all things if you believe. I can do all things through Christ. Paul's using it in his situation. He's struggling with a few things. You don't have to have some of those things, the spiritual deep teachings of God in context. But some, you have to have them in context or you're going to miss the spiritual teaching. And see, that's why we need discernment, understanding how to rightly unfold or divide the Word of God and allocate it and manage it and put the pieces together appropriately. This takes an anointing with God. It takes a relationship. It takes growing in Christ. I'm not perfect yet, but I'm laying out the foundation of how we can grow. Some things you have to have in context. Some things you don't. I'm, that's just the way it is. This is one of those verses that if you take it out of context, you're not going to get the spiritual teaching behind it. Let's start with the context of this verse. All right, the people that don't understand this or don't want to understand this are really the people that don't want to stop sinning. They are looking for ways that they can justify their sin. If you love God and you love holiness and purity, and even though you're not perfect, you're still trying to turn away from wickedness because you have God living in your heart. That's your desire is to live pure and in love and in, in holiness. So if that's who you are, even though you're struggling, you'll understand this teaching. But if you like your addictions and you want to justify it and you, you, you're going to look for teachings that tell you it's okay to continue down that path because your heart is not right. It's not set on the foundation of God. This teaching really distinguishes those who are in Christ and those who are not because this teaching is about fellowship with God, having fellowship with God, having a relationship with God, and how you can tell the difference between those who are in Him and who are not. Let's start in the very first verse of 1 John chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we've heard and handled with our eyes, he's talking about Christ, he's talking about the word of life, he's talking about Jesus who came into the world. Look, for the life was manifested, and they bear witness of the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That is the Son of God he's talking about, right? Everybody understands that. See, look, verse 3. That which we've seen and heard, we declare unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us. There you go, the very th third verse. He's talking about having fellowship with this manifested life that came into the world. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus. This is already beginning to talk about having fellowship with God through Jesus Christ who came into the world. That's what we're talking about here. 
And these things I'm writing unto you, verse 4, that you may be full of joy. We can have fellowship with God, verse 5. This then is the message that I'm writing to you. Pay attention to the message that he's writing to them. This is what we've heard from the beginning, and we now declare it unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. And this is talking about having fellowship with him. He is pure, he is righteous, he is holy, he is understanding and wisdom. That's what light is, love, everything that's kingdom-oriented. God is light. He is not darkness. He does not sin. He is not wicked. He has no uh, iniquity in him, right? No carnality. He's not like the men of the earth. So they're establishing right now that God came into the world and we can have fellowship with him. We can have a relationship with him. And he starts by saying right away, God is light. He's perfect. And in him is no darkness, right? Let's continue. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we're liars. Now here, here's where sin is. Here's where sin is. It's actually teaching you in verse 6 that if you practice sin, you don't know God. Let, let's not even get into verse 8 yet. Right away, verse 6 is already establishing that if you say you know God, you have fellowship with him, he's light, he's pure, he's righteous. If you say you have fellowship with God, and you walk in darkness. You're a liar and you do not know the truth. Now walking in darkness is someone who refuses to stop sinning, who says they can't stop sinning, who justifies their sin, makes, makes excuses for their sins, who refuses to acknowledge that they've been called to live holy, they love their sin, they perpetually practice sin, they call themselves sinners, that's all they do is sin. They even think that they're sinners. That's someone who's walking in darkness. When we fall into sin, brethren, when we fall into sin occasionally, we're not walking in darkness. When we sin, the Bible tells us we're covered by the blood of Jesus. We have an advocate with the Father. And if we confess, He'll give us life. If we ask God to help us, He'll give us life through that process. We're not lost sinners. We're not lost sinners walking and practicing darkness. He is distinguishing someone who walks daily in darkness. Their minds are dark. Their attitudes are dark. They have no faith about changing, about holiness. They are doubting the power of God. They can't be changed because they don't believe. He's talking about that person. If that person claims to be a Christian, that person claims to have a relationship with God, he says right here, if we say we have fellowship with God, that we know Him, that we're involved with Him, and we walk in darkness at the same time, we are liars, we're self-deceived, and we do not know what the truth is. We're walking spiritual zombies of dead religion and self-deception. So right away, this verse and this chapter, right away before we even get to verse 8, right away we need to establish that he's talking about having fellowship with the light of God. And if we don't practice light, if we walk in darkness, if we practice sin, if we continue to sin, if we continue to sin in darkness without trying, without trying to repent, without confessing, he says, you don't know God, you're a liar. So that's what this chapter and verse are coming out of. That's what the context is all about. Now let's continue so we understand what verse 8 is really saying. But if we walk in the light... We're not walking in darkness, even if we slip in sin. If we slip in sin, we're still covered by the grace. If we slip in sin, we are still have an advocate with the Father. We're not practicing darkness. We're still children of the light. God has mercy on us. We're practicing righteousness, even if we fall sometimes. He says, but if we walk in the light, we're keeping His words and commandments. We're striving to obey Him. We believe His teachings. We're trying to stop. We're, we're seeking holiness. But if we walk in light as He, God, is in the light, so if we are in the light as He is in the light, if we turn from sin and seek holiness as He is holy, if we've confessed our sins and we repented as He is perfect and righteous, if we're working that out by believing, daily believing this is possible, that's walking in the light as He is in the light, look what it says, then we have fellowship with God then the blood of Jesus Christ and His Son cleanses us from all sin. Do 
Do you realize you have to put your faith in his teachings before the blood of Jesus can cleanse you? Do you realize you have to confess your sins to God and turn from them before the blood of Jesus can cleanse you? The blood of Jesus cannot cleanse somebody that walks in darkness. Look at verse 6 says, if we, have felt, if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, the blood of Jesus does not cleanse someone who does not live by faith. Someone who's walking in darkness does not believe the teachings of repenting from your sins. They think it's unnecessary. They don't believe, trust, or obey that. They're still in darkness. But we believe, trust, and obey that even though we're not perfect yet. We're seeking to walk in the light as he is in the light. And then he says we have fellowship with him then. And then the blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sins. The blood of Jesus will cleanse somebody who lives by faith, who walks in the light, who confesses their sins, who comes to Jesus, who obeys his commands and teachings. That's the backdrop of verse 8. Look what verse 8 says. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We have to confess our sin to God in order for the blood of Jesus to cleanse us from our sins. We have to turn away from our sin and walk in the light as He is in the light. And then we'll have fellowship with Him. And then the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from our sins. But if we say we have no sin, we say we have no sin. We don't need the blood of Jesus. You're essentially saying you don't need to follow Jesus' teachings. You're saying you don't need to obey him. You don't need to listen to him. Your sin is okay with you. You can keep your sin. He's saying right here, if you say you have no sin and you don't turn from your sin, you're deceiving yourself and the truth is not in us. Is that not what verse 6 says? Verse 8 says the truth is not in you if you don't confess your sin. But verse 6 says you're walking in darkness. If you don't confess your sin, you're walking in darkness and you do not know the truth. Verse 6 says if you walk in sin, you do not know the truth. Verse 8 says if you don't confess your sin, you don't know the truth either. Look how this all fits together. We're talking about having a relationship with God and being in fellowship with Him and turning from wickedness and walking in the light, turning away from sin. Verse 8 is saying that you have to confess your sin and if you don't, you're deceiving yourself. If you say you have no sin and you deceive yourself, you don't need the blood of Jesus, there's no such thing as sin, you're deceiving yourself. Verse 9 and 10 confirm that. Verse 9 and 10 completely confirm what we're learning. It says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But if we say that we have not sinned, he's reiterating one more time what verse 8 says. Verse 8 says, if we say we have no sin, verse 10 is confirming that if we say we have not sinned ever and there's no sin in our lives, then we don't need the blood of Jesus. We're making him a liar and his word is not in us. His word is not in us. If we say we have no sin and no need for the blood of Jesus, no need to, to listen and obey him, we don't have him. Those who practice sin don't have God. Those who continue in darkness don't have fellowship with the light. Look what the very next verse of the very next chapter says. My little children, I'm writing these things unto you. Why? That you stop sinning. All this information, I write these things unto you that you have fellowship with God and that he is light and we're not supposed to be in darkness anymore. We confess our sins and come into the light. If you don't do that and you say you have no sin and you don't want to repent, you're a liar and you don't have God. He said, I'm writing all these things to you so that you now repent, so that you can have fellowship with God. You can have fellowship with him. But he says here, if any man does sin, if any man sins, we have an advocate with the Father. If means you're turning from sin, but you might sin sometimes. If you stumble, if you fall, this does not mean always. If does not mean you're perpetually bound to sin. If means you may sin sometimes. If does not mean you cannot stop sinning. Please understand that. I'm going to say that again. If any man sins means you may stumble along the way of perfection. If any man sin does not mean you are always going to sin. 
I hope you get this. Last verse. 2 John verse 9, whosoever continues to sin, whoever transgresses, whosoever is walking in darkness and does not listen to the teachings of Jesus, the doctrine of Christ, look what it says. He's a liar and has not God. Anyone who's walking in darkness and practicing sin, who says they don't need to turn from their sin, they have no sin, there's no need to, to deal with sin. He's a liar and has not God, but look what it says. He that does abide in the teachings of Jesus, Jesus always taught us to repent in our minds and change our lives, to change our mind and life together as one that's repenting. Jesus always taught us to believe in his teachings, believe in his name, believe in him and obey him. He says, whoever does this has both the Father and the Son. And look what it says in the verse 10. If there comes anyone unto you that does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house, neither bid him. Godspeed. My dear friends, I hope you understand now what 1 John chapter 1 verse 8 is talking about and the teachings of Jesus and the doctrine of Christ. Let's get back to the other part of this Bible study. People that say they've never sinned and have no sin are liars and that is what that verse is talking about. But the devil wants you to take it out of context. And the devil wants to twist it. He wants you to believe what? His doctrine. We just got through clarifying the difference between Jesus and the devil and their teachings. The devil wants you to believe that you cannot stop sinning and Jesus wants you to believe that you can. Amen? Okay, let's look at this. Okay, we saw the teaching of, of the devil. He says you can't stop teaching. What does Jesus say? Look at this verse. It's simple. God plainly teaches us that if we believe, anything is possible. Can I get an amen? What does anything mean? Anything except walking holy? Anything except being pure? Anything except repenting from our sins? Anything except obeying Him? Come on! He's talking about spiritual things, but man used that to get rich. Man used that scripture to get rich. Anything is possible. You can gain the whole world, brothers and sisters. Jesus said you're going to lose your soul. Sure, you can gain the whole world. Sure, you can use faith to gain material possession. Sure, you can do those things. It's true. How do you think they're getting rich on the name of Jesus? It's a principle. It's the principle. It's the cosmic universal principle that God has allowed to come in. It's his teaching. It's his rules. And people are using it for material gains. But we use it for what? Godliness. We use it for the kingdom. We use it to overcome sin. I am so glad. I am so glad that God says we can do anything if we believe. Don't you love that teaching, brethren? I mean, think about it. You got cigarettes in your life, you got masturbation in your life, you got an anger problem, an eating problem, you got thoughts that pop into your head. Well, Jesus said we can do anything. And I believe Jesus. I believe the, I believe the Lord's teachings over the devils. Oh, praise the Lord. Who are you going to believe? 